Hi, this is Aaron again with uh, Eric Dollard here at uh, EPD Labs down in the, the desert in the Nevada. And uh, uh, in this segment we're going to talk a little bit about uh, an uh, upcoming, not just book, but really it's a package. Uh, Eric has a book that he refers to as the RCA book. Right. And um, if you've been following Eric's work over the years, you know about the, uh, uh, like the Tesla Marconi wireless type Bolina Station. The, the Bolina Station yeah. in Bolina, California. Right, KPH and KET, Alexanderson, Marconi, RCA. It's a, one of the major radio events on the planet Earth is located right. in Bolinas. Um, very historically significant. And um, uh, there's a documentary by PBS called Empire of the Air. And you would recommend people watch that? To kind yeah, of they have a kind of understanding what RCA and the inventors and everybody were going through. And um, I don't know if it's available for free anywhere on the internet, but uh, it is, I don't know, it's maybe an hour and a half or so, documentary called Empire of the Air. It's a PBS documentary. If you type it in Google, Empire of the Air, uh, PBS documentary, you're going to find some results. Um, I saw it in Amazon for sale. You can buy it as a DVD, I think, or you know, VHS tape. Yeah, there's also um, some uh, a Russian website that has it for free. Okay. So that would be a matter of you know, Googling it yeah. to see what you can find. Um, so when you watch that uh, documentary for the first time, you know, what stuck out to you that there was... Well, that, there was two things. First of all, Jerry Vassilados uh, produced a lot of material on, on that technology of the, uh, the, the Marconi-Tesla era that had never been known about. Mm -hmm. and, and going through that, uh, that's when I realized that the Alexander system, Alexanderson system had a lot more going on than anybody was ever talking about, and the way that RCA taught it to me was not correct. That RCA had actually was misleading everybody as to how this stuff came about and what their point was in history. Now, when you talk about Jerry uh, Vassilatos' books, um, is it mostly like the Vril Compendium? Well, the, the Vril Compendium, he has something called Military VLF Radio, He's got one that's called Military VLF Radio, and then he has another one. I forget what it is. I got I got them here in the shelves, mm -hmm. but there was two of them that related to long wave radio, and uh, and presented a lot of diagrams and pictures and material and, and statements by people that uh, that shed a whole new light on the Alex Anderson system, and allowed me to uh, to come up with my advancement on that system to produce my telluric receiving antennas and possibly a telluric communication system. And then at the same time, I had watched uh, that Empire of the Air had come out, and the two of them, then I realized it was time, uh, because Jerry Vassilato's stuff was, uh, there's no way, it didn't really, something needed to be written about it. Mm -hmm. it. It was too, you know, it was just photocopies of stuff. He wrote a book uh, explaining a lot of that called Secrets of Cold War Technology. Mm -hmm. So he has a introductory chapter that explains the pathology of the conspiracy-minded person uh, to create this harp uh, fantasy, which has no validity to it whatsoever. Yeah, the chapter one in Secrets Cold War Technology is, is a whole book on its, on its own. Yeah, so he describes the mind virus uh, that keeps perpetuating the falsehoods of Tesla, uh, the whole uh, political structure of the oligarchs and how, you know, they manipulate the military technology reality, mm -hmm. and then, uh, then once he lays the scenario for why you know there's all these problems, then he starts with what well, what was it that Tesla was doing that was different, and then he shows how Marconi you know screwed that up. Mm -hmm. There's another chapter on Marconi, and then he goes off into other aspects of, of military uh, technology that you know were beyond like the new how the nuclear bomb got developed. And, he has, he has kind of a, a funny way of writing, and it's, he gets his technical terms wrong, like, you know, he might use a gamatron where you're supposed to use a thybertron or whatever, mm -hmm. but for the layman, uh, the overall story is good, even though he might have, you know, technically he might have some things backwards. That chapter reverse. one on Tesla. Yeah, so, so he makes some references to some of Tesla's discoveries with the radiant matter, uh, which Tesla uh, had written about, but not something that he'd written a lot about. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much, had, at that point, had read everything that Tesla wrote. Everything that people had written about Tesla, 99% of which was pure garbage. Mm -hmm. And then, then he comes out with some material that, uh, that hadn't been talked about before and that was like news. So when I got his book in my hands, I, I 
spent eight hours straight reading it. Mm -hmm. I could not put it down mm -hmm. because here was a whole new presentation on Nikola Tesla, something fresh, not the same right. beaten story or the same Soviet scalar conspiracy garbage or any of that stuff. This was an, actually an anti-conspiratorial book mm -hmm. pointing out how the conspiracy people and all of them are, are the ones that are really screwing it all up. And you actually know Jerry Bosolano. used to yeah, work with I, him. Well, no, he used to call me at Camp David. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we talked extensively on this, and then that initiated his writing of that book. Mm -hmm. So between that and his real compendium, uh, it was time uh, to write, rewrite that uh, aspect of, of those works uh, with technical accuracy. Mm -hmm. And then seeing the empire of the air, uh, which ignored everything from before Marconi, Tesla, and all that, and, and was basically about RCA, uh, then there was also a need to write a book that where the history of radio was uh, was filled in and not, you know, lopsided that RCA invented radio and everybody beforehand was just an idiot mm -hmm. or didn't exist. So the two merged into when I decided to put this book together and then at the, at the same time I had forced uh, the Park Service to let me do a a one-year archaeological study of the antenna field and, and the voodoo was perfect for it. Uh, uh, some idiot uh, in Commonweal had started a big grass fire out there and burned a lot of the antenna field, uh, the grass and stuff, which was good because then I could see where all the old foundations were. Otherwise, they were never visible. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, several massive rainstorms that uh, started unearthing, uh, you know, buried masses of insulators. There's some insulators like no human has ever even seen before. This is mm -hmm. fantastic pieces of equipment. And then from what was in Jerry's book, and what I had rediscovered in the Bolinas Antenna Field, then it clicked on me that what Alexanderson had come up with, and it was like a major revelation. It was, you know, like something you read about in the Bible, with the burning bush or whatever. It just completely blew me away, and then I implemented the whole system at Landers. Mm -hmm. And I come up with a new type of system that's that is a composite of Alexanderson and Tesla and takes this technology beyond what both of them were capable of doing. Of course, that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So the so the unique thing about the uh, this Alexanderson type system is that it's not using you know so-called conventional electromagnetic waves. Exactly. Everything that I that mm -hmm. I write about and present in my RCA book is uh, is the what's called the electrostatic wireless. Is none of these systems are electromagnetic. So you say they're dielectric. Yeah, they're electrostatic, and, and a lot of them are, are true single phase, they're monopolar, there's not two terminals, mm -hmm. and, and they basically are all telluric systems. They transmit through the mass of the Earth. They do not so like electromagnetic you, you need directional and impulses, or there's... No, just one phase. Uh -huh. In other words, you don't need two terminals. Mm -hmm. So that way you can take your terminal, hook it to the Earth, and transmit into it. Otherwise, if you need two, and you stick them in the ground, short it out. And you say that, that possibly at some point it may be proven that that is actually no time delay. Well, that's or, yet to be seen, but I, I had determined that Landers, that uh, that using a, um, a pair of antennas of similar proportions, one electromagnetic and one not electromagnetic, mm -hmm. that the, uh, the lightning discharges that I'm receiving would come in on the non-electromagnetic antenna, which was the telluric antenna, before the ones did on the electromagnetic. Mm -hmm. They got their before it got their quicker, if if that is the right term, mm -hmm. because what I found mathematically is these waves do not have a velocity, so you cannot speak of them in terms of velocity. Right, they do not exist in that dimensional relationship, mm -hmm. and that's why the uh, the Einsteiner uh, can't comprehend any of this stuff because their whole everything that they discuss or, or theorize upon is all based on there's only one dimensional reality of the velocity of light and there are no other dimensions just not time or space they took all those things out well if you're in that situation then you could never conceive of how any of this stuff would work it's impossible mm -hmm. so i got it worked out mathematically so the book has a uh, an archaeological part you know where I, I took detailed photographs of you know the artifacts and the antenna mounts i went back and got pictures of like all the people, as much of the old equipment. A lot of the pictures I got from Jerry Vassilatos, uh, maybe 50% of them. 
-hmm. And then, uh, then maybe about another 25% were, uh, is uh, the movie and the book Empire of the Air, uh, you know, used a lot of stock, uh, you know, RCA photos mm -hmm. of Sarnoff and, mm -hmm. you know, and of course there's all the photos of Tesla and Marconi and so I kind of assembled it together so, so that my book and, and the Empire of the Air and the Vassilatos book all sit good in parallel with each other. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's like similar pictures and similar descriptions, mm -hmm. so they all work together. Right. Yes, one unified uh, writing. So in the uh, the Eric's RCA book is being assembled right now, and um, we're going to be launching it here, making it available uh, pretty quick, um, maybe, maybe within about one week or less, actually. We're looking at maybe releasing it this Thursday, which would be tomorrow, but since I'm down here, it's not, not yeah. too easy. So maybe uh, next week, Tuesday or Thursday. But... Uh, uh, in the package, there's going to be, um, you know, Eric's RCA book. Uh, there's another book which I'm not, I'm not going to mention what it is right now. Uh, written by a historian, and it's a book which was really never released or published anywhere. It was a companion to uh, my archaeological study. There was the two of us that worked on that. Okay. So my RCA book was the technical half of it, and his was, you know, the the history timeline of, you know, who did this and who did that, and and when the station changed hands, uh, you know, when Sarnoff, all that kind of non-technical, personal, people-orientated stuff, and mine is the equipment-orientated in. Mm -hmm. So the two of them together produced the complete, you know, right. why would you say, synopsis and description and history right. of the station. It's probably the most complete radio history package of that stuff that's available, that's accurate. Right. And, and plus there's two other uh, documents in there. One is by uh, Howith. On Navy communications. Yeah, the Navy uh, played a very important part in all this, and I did a I did two lectures for the San Francisco Tesla Society on this also. But the Navy, as you might know, is not uh, welcome in San Francisco, and and both of those lectures are suppressed. Mm -hmm. But I think one leaked out, and uh, and that's going to be part of the package, right? Yeah, there's one a of those Navy lectures is in there. Yeah, there's a couple uh, videos which will be. Um, part of the package. I think one of them is circulating on YouTube. Um, I'll make it easy for anybody to, to be able to download it when they get the package, so they'll actually have a copy on their computer. Well, the stunning thing um, that came out of that whole Navy M study, uh, when I started going back to like, you know, the archives and the rare papers museums at UC Berkeley and all that stuff, is the Marconi system never worked. The whole thing was a giant flop. Mm -hmm. The hams or experimenters were doing just as good as the giant stations that are going you know. Right. And the Navy didn't like that idea. They got burned. Mm -hmm. So they threw Marconi out and took the stations over. Okay. So I get into that whole process of how, right. you know, Admiral Bullard and, and all these people had took the, the mess that was called radio of all these different uh, experimenters and inventors. There must have been thousands of patent suits going on and, and it was stock scams and rip-offs and stuff that didn't work right. and uh, once World War I got started the Navy decided to put a stop to the whole thing uh, outlawed radio mm -hmm. altogether you were not allowed to have any antennas or the whole thing just outlawed the whole thing right. uh, disbanded all the patent suits and formed a, a consortium of Bell Telephone uh, and General Electric as the main contributors to start making vacuum tubes that worked, start applying radio systems that worked. So then uh, Alex Anderson was brought in and he produced the first fully functional transatlantic radio system that worked for voice as well as telegraph. Mm -hmm. And then the Radio Corporation of America was formed as the holder of that technology mm -hmm. because the Navy could only uh, transfer it, they couldn't hold it after the war. So in 1919 they conceived Radio Corporation of America uh, that disbanded American Marconi, absorbed American Marconi, and became the Radio Corporation. So all the information that came through those channels, you're ba you, you'd basically be the, the steward of the information, or yeah, I've managed to take all this stuff and put it back together in a you know mm -hmm. an accurate and, and complete form. Right. And when you mention General Electric, I mean there's the histor the historian's book, which you'll see when that's released. Um, Eric's book, which goes into you know the archaeological stuff. 
but also there's a lot of you know diagrams that you put in there. Well, I even get into the math. Right. Towards the end, all the uh, you know the unique properties of these Alexanderson networks of mm -hmm. transmitting waves and counter space, and you know it gets pretty technical towards the end. Right. But in the beginning, it's it's basically another picture book. Uh, the only thing that's unfortunate is the originals are all lost, so mm -hmm. you know the pictures are not going to be quite as clear as they were, right. and all that. This 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 book is is possibly uh, the most highly suppressed uh, work I've ever produced. How many years have you been waiting for this uh, to get out? It's been uh, actively suppressed now. I finished it ten years ago, or mm -hmm. more now. I keep forgetting that you know you get older every year. Mm -hmm. I think twelve actually. Mm -hmm. I completed uh, the basic format of the book. Yeah, the year Y2K is when uh, I finished reconstructing this Corolla and hit the road for the first test of Y2K, right when the world thought it was going to die. I hit, mm. hit the road in my car, headed off to the bushes. The car worked fine. The RCA book, uh, I had to pay somebody three or four hundred dollars to type the whole thing up mm -hmm. and, uh, and got all the photographs in place and everything and, uh, and then it just froze. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the originals, with all the original photographs and the whole thing, were uh, in the hands of one of the original employees that got me started out at RCA when I was about 16 years old, mm -hmm. uh, the station manager, Gus Kovats. Uh, but when he died, uh, uh, the fingers got in there and all the stuff disappeared. Mm -hmm. so, um, so besides the historian book, the historian's book, your book, there's that... Uh, PDF, which r really isn't a book, it's more of a compilation of stuff that that you used, I guess, with your lecture, you know, the Howith yeah, document right. uh, on the Navy communications. And then there's a fourth one, which is, um, looks like it's from General Electric. What What is that one about? Uh, that is Alexanderson's uh, description of his work. From In his own words. He, some of it, yeah. yeah. There, and there's a lot of diagrams, uh, patents, uh, yeah, right. you know, and that type of stuff, so... And, that, and those are all going to be included in the package. So you're basically getting two books. There's going to be those two PDFs, uh, documents, which um, uh, Eric had a couple talks based on those documents. And then there's going to be a couple videos that you can download relating to the RCA uh, Bolinas uh, station. And uh, so today's uh, September 18th. Uh, this package, you know, for the first time in 10 years, Right. Your, well, your now book it's is actually, be, you know, I got to, it's I got to, to the odometers pushed to further, now I think it's 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been saying 10 years for more than one year. It's 12 right. years now. It's been 12, 12 years. years that that book's been sat on. Well, you're going to be able to get it into your hands uh, before the end of September. Um, you know, for the first time, people are going to be able to, to, to see it, and it's going to finally get out there. So, glad to be able to make that happen. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say about the... The wireless, the RCA stuff. Well, or? I think we pretty much said, yeah, said it all. Okay, so um, you know, it, and again, if you go to uh, ericpdollar.com, that's Eric's uh, official homepage, ericpdollar.com, and on that, um, I'd encourage you to join that mailing list. That's uh, uh, Eric's uh, supporters list. Uh, get on there. You're going to be able to see all the updates before anybody else. You know, or at least the same time as all of our other uh, newsletters and stuff goes out, you know, through uh, either White Dragon Press or through uh, A&P Electronic Media's newsletter like uh, Energy Times. Uh, we're certainly going to be announcing it in energeticforum.com and also energysciencefoam.com. And, uh, uh, but definitely go to ericpdollar.com, join that mailing list there, and you're going to be one of the first to know as soon as uh, Eric's uh, RCA uh, uh, book is going to be coming out. So. Anyway, I can't for, wait. Yeah, me too. It's <laughs> pretty exciting. Yeah. So, okay, um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up, and then uh, in another video, we'll we'll talk a little bit about the cosmic induction generator and a little bit of the stuff kind of going on here.